Welcome back into Wayne's World viewers with myself Wayne. Thank you for joining me for another video on the channel today. We are following up the first leg of the Manchester City quarterfinal game in the Champions League. We're going into it with a 3-0 lead after the first leg but we're heading to the Etihad where we've had trouble in the past against Manchester City particularly this season. Now as ever if you are enjoying the content if you are new to the channel feel free to hit the subscribe button down below we are at 76 subscribers on the channel and we're aiming to hit 100 hopefully by the middle of this year so we've got a few months to try and make up that 24 subscriber difference it would really help me out if you do subscribe to the channel and feel free to hit the like button as well if you are enjoying the content we'll be continuing with this series until we've hit our main objective which is to win every trophy with Arsenal something obviously we've never done we've never won the Champions League even the Carabao Cup in recent years I don't think we've won since the early 90s so we want success we want a sustained period of success and we're going into the Champions League second leg as heavy favourites. So last episode then was the comfortable 3-0 victory over Manchester City where their formation was really easily exposed by us and it was a fantastic performance. We blew them away, particularly in the first half. All three of our goals come in in the first 16 minutes of the game. We then followed that up with a 4-0 victory over Leicester City away from home. Lautaro Martinez with the brace, Gabriel and Bakayo Saka who's in the form of the season so far. He's been performing really well. Obviously, Kingsley Coman started the season on fire. He's recently got injured and been out for about two to three months or so. And Sack has stepped in and really made that shirt his own. He is, he'll probably be in the squad on his own merit, just based off the way he's playing. What that means after the Leicester game was in the Premier League, we still sit second at the minute to Liverpool in the Premier League but we've got a game in hand but the way that it stands at the minute we need to win that game in hand by three or more goals if we want to go back above Liverpool we've got a better defensive record than them we've con conceded one less goal however it's the goals for column where we are not struggling because we have the second best attack in the league they've just scored four more goals than us the rest of our records are pretty much even. Same amount of draws, same amount of defeats. We've obviously got one less win because of that game. Following the Manchester City second leg, which we'll be bringing to you shortly, we've got a semi-final in the FA Cup against Chelsea at Wembley, and that will be Friday's episode. So it's getting down to the real crunch of the season. Looking at our fixtures, I think our game in hand is against Wolves at home. So that should be, who are currently in 14th, that should be a comfortable win. Whether or not we can win by three goals or not remains to be seen. Even if we do win by more than three goals, we have to continue outscoring Liverpool. And with a front three of Salah, Haaland, Mbappe, with Firmino and Mane on the bench, I'm not sure if that's possible. I don't think Liverpool are going to slip up. If you look at this run that we've been on, it's a stretch of nine games now for us straight victories going back to January we've not lost since the 1-0 defeat to Chelsea right we go up against Manchester City in the second leg and interestingly enough Liverpool play in the Premier League against Crystal Palace Crystal Palace bottom of the table I'm not expecting them to really do anything I think the main interest here for Crystal Palace is if they lose I think that all but confirms their relegation. Right now, they've got a mathematical shot. But if they do lose to Liverpool, they'd have to win every single game until the end of the season and probably win them quite comfortably as well. So I'm not expecting Crystal Palace to beat Liverpool here today. Going on to the team selection, same lineup as we played in the last leg. We've got a couple of guys on the bench who are ineligible based on their under-21 status. We're going to bring in Thomas Partey and also Saliba to come onto the bench. But outside of that, fully fit, apart from Lautaro Martinez, who just about passes a fitness test, do we risk him? With the Premier League, we've got a 3-0 lead. I'm not going to risk him. I'm going to play Martinelli instead. Or do I play Bamiang? No, we're going to play Martinelli. Martinelli's been good this season, particularly in the Champions League. Um, we are not going to risk Lautaro Martinez there. With the Premier League, obviously, we need goals. I don't really want to get a serious injury to him. And remember, we are 3-0 up after the first leg. Everyone else, match fit. Let's get into it. Let's go into the match. We should be heavy favourites. 
There shouldn't be any slip-ups here, barring some sort of miracle for Manchester City. Let's see how they line up. Manchester City then, they've gone with that 4-4-2 again. Bernardo Silva and Phil Foden as the only central midfielders. Jao Felix and Alexander Isak up front. All-out attack from them. I am surprised that they've not gone for a little bit more of a defensive-minded midfielder. I think Rodri's still in their ranks. I think someone like that would probably add a little bit more steel. But in the first minute, Alexander Isak takes the throw-in from Pedro Porro. And Raheem Sterling can run at the defence. Well covered by Ben White. And Tommy Asu lays it back to Aaron Ramsdale, who's been fantastic this season. We can now build up. Even though there are no away goals in the Champions League this year, I can safely say if we score one more... That is tie over. We're not conceding four. And the build-up play, as always, is patient from us. Although, I'm scared we're going to just punt it long in a minute. Which we've done. And Aaron Ramsdale does go long. And it's been won, though, by Calvert-Lewin. Finds Martinelli. Odegaard pulling strings in the midfield already. Still only a minute gone. So, Boz, like, can we score from this? Martinelli has thumped it home. Is that onside though? It looked offside to me. I'm hoping it will stand. We'll check with the VAR now. Martinelli, obviously in place of Lautaro Martinez, goal disallowed. He was just offside. It's fantastic play though in the build-up. It's a great assist from Zabozlai, but the goal's been chalked off. At 23 minutes, still 3-0 on the aggregate scoreline, I think we are quite comfortable as things stand. And it doesn't seem as though Manchester City have given us too much of a trouble. And we're building now down this right-hand side. Spozai has a little bit of space. It's clipped high up. It's gone all the way across to Kieran Tierney. A bit of a weird one there. I don't even think Calvert-Lewin can jump that high. But Kieran Tierney finds a better ball in. It's well cleared by Phil Foden. But we are sustaining the pressure well. And Saka clips it up. Martinelli with the header. He's hit the post. Calvert-Lewin for the tapping. Was he offside? Is it going to be another disallowed goal for us? We're potentially 1-0 up again. But they are checking for offside here. Calvert-Lewin was potentially offside. Yes, goal disallowed. But the main chance was Gabriel Martinelli. He's causing them trouble up front. He's hit the post from the edge. It's a brilliant ball in by Saka. He was onside. It's Calvert-Lewin on the follow-up who was off. It's a tap-in, but it's still nil-nil. And straight from that free kick, can Manchester City create something? It's a ball straight over the top. Jao Felix wins the header, but we do well to cut it out. And Martin Erdegaard speeds up play, finds Martinelli. Free ball from Erdegaard. Saka's in. It's gone just wide. That should be another goal. We've been dominant this first half. We definitely should be leading. I don't think it's going to come back to bite us, but let's just encourage the guys. As I said, one goal and we're through. Looking at some of these stats, Manchester City have been restricted to just one shot. It's been off target as well. We've had seven, one shot on target from us. We are sustaining the pressure well, even though it hasn't counted on the scoreboard. Nil-nil at half time. We are three nil up on the aggregate scoreline. Unless some miracle happens, I do not see us throwing this one away. Stranger things have happened on Football Manager. I'm sure in some of your saves as well, stranger things have happened. But we're heavy favourites to go through. But just to settle the nerves, I would like one goal in this second leg. Free kick to Manchester City and Bernardo Silva whips it in towards the back post. Ruben Diaz is there. He's whacked it off the crossbar. Cleared by Kieran Tierney, but not very well. Grealish takes the ball from Bernardo Silva. Finds Ruben Diaz. Back to Bernardo. Jao Felix finds Isak and Bernardo breaks into the box. Who took the initial free kick. It's a fantastic save by Aaron Ramsdale. They are starting to add a little bit of pressure now. You'd expect that they've probably gone very attacking now that this is their last chance. There's another header over from Ruben Diaz. Ooh, that that's a little bit close. Manchester City is whipped in again from Bernardo Silva. Laporte this time at the near post. Head is it just over? That's a couple of chances now where Manchester City have caused us a little bit of trouble. We might start wasting time quite early. We're going to encourage the boys again at 60 minutes. See if we can create something of our own. We've been a bit quiet this second half as Erdegaard whips the ball out and Ferland Mendy intercepts it with the header and now Ferran Torres can break down this right-hand side. Squares it. Gabriel Jesus is there. That's his seventh goal of the season. One goal back from Manchester City. Half an hour left. They need to get two more. It's a great goal. Jack Grealish with a fantastic board. Don't know where Kieran Tierney is. Completely out of position. Ferran Torres down his right-hand side. Cuts it back. It's a fantastic finish from Gabriel Jesus. I think they've taken off Alexander Isak, who was a little bit poor. And I think they might have taken off... No, Jao Felix is still on. It's Ferran Torres come on for Raheem Sterling. Man City have been all over us this second half. We might have to change something soon. One goal kind of kills off this tie. 
and we go from favourites to through. And we can build up here quite nicely as Bukayo Saka is on this right-hand side, getting some space away from Vinicius Jr. And Bukayo Saka cuts it onto his left foot. Zboz lies there. He's been tripped. Is it going to stand as a penalty? It looked a little bit harsh. It was quite soft. Not sure who gave away the penalty there, but... Is it going to stand? Yes, penalty has been awarded. I don't mind if we get a little bit lucky that way. Can Zabozlai tuck it away? It would be nice to get back on level terms and go 4-1 up in the tie on aggregate. He smashes it home. Zabozlai is a fantastic penalty taker. That's his 13th goal of the season. It's 1-1 on the night. 4-1 to us on aggregate. And we're through to the Champions League semi-finals. So Bozai there, fantastic penalty, just rifles it into the top corner. Gave Edison no chance. And we are all but through. This has been a professional performance from us in this game. We're doing what we can. We're going to make a couple of changes now with the Premier League in mind at the weekend. Just to save in a little bit of fitness. Kieran Tin is going to come off for Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Sambi Lekonga is going to come on for Zabozla. Even though he scored the goal, I don't really want to risk him at all. And Emil smith -Rowe is going to come on for Martin Erdegaard. 22 minutes left plus stoppage time. I don't really see us throwing away a 4-1 aggregate lead. We're in the 87th minute. A goal here shouldn't really change anything. Although I'd like to potentially get the victory if we can. Brilliant challenge from Tommy Asso. And Emil smith -Rowe is on the break. Finds Gabriel Martinelli. And Kunku through to smith -Rowe, Breaking into the box. No, it's well defended there by Ruben Diaz. But... The ball breaks free and now it's Jao Felix with a fantastic ball over the top. Finds Ferran Torres. Has an effort from 25 yards. Very speculative over the bar. Time's just going to tick down now or is it? No. Ferlan Mendy with the throw in but it's Bakayo Saka with the interception here. We can just slow things down really. We don't need to play at a high tempo. We don't need to look to get forward. Even though I would like the win, we're already through. Semi-finalists in the Champions League as Bukayo Saka looks for Nkunku in the middle. Finds Smith Rowe, edge of the box. That's it. Game over. We are winners. And we're through to the Champions League semi-finals. Knocked off Manchester City. It'll be interesting to see who we do face in the next round of the Champions League. But this is the furthest we've got on this save. Last year, we were knocked out. And given how far we've got... In the Champions League, given how far we've got in the FA Cup and the likelihood that Liverpool are probably going to win out their games to see off the season, a double of an FA Cup and a Champions League would not be the worst season whatsoever. One more minute of stoppage time has gone. There we go. It's full time. Arsenal 2, Manchester City 1. On aggregate, it's Arsenal 5, Manchester City 1. We've got one over Allegri once again. Absolutely fantastic. Let's see how the other quarterfinals have gone. Liverpool have beat quite easily Crystal Palace. That's another three goals. So now, in our two games in hand, we need a six-goal difference. That's 3-0, 3-0, 4-0, 2-0, something like that. We need a six-goal swing. That will be quite difficult. Let's find out who we'll play then in the semi-finals of the Champions League. So we'll be going up against English competitors once again as we play Chelsea who knocked out RB Leipzig 6-1 on aggregate. Quite convincing from them. Obviously, we played Chelsea already this season. We beat them a couple of times and we've lost to them as well. That loss to them in the league was obviously our last defeat this season, coming about 12, 13 games ago. So it's going to be tough. And having to run through the majority of the English sides in this Champions League run is... Proving a little bit tricky. Not something that I'm really enjoying. But Chelsea in the semi-finals of the Champions League. We've also got just Chelsea in the semi-finals of the FA Cup at Wembley. So we could be playing them a maximum of five times this season. Absolutely. Or six times. I think we knocked them out of the Carabao Cup as well. Absolutely crazy from us. In the other semi-final, Real Madrid will be going up against Borussia Dortmund. Now, if I do make it through to the final, I'd like it to be against Dortmund. Dortmund are probably the easier side here, but we've now got to concentrate on the Premier League and semi-final opponents are we need to concentrate on the FA Cup semi-final. We go up against Chelsea this weekend and that's going to be the next episode for you on Friday. I hope you are enjoying the series still. We're getting ever closer to winning that Champions League and FA Cup. Can it come 
but not at the expense of the Premier League. Fingers crossed. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, feel free to hit that like button down below. And until the next time, stay safe and I'll see you for the next video.